guys, welcome to Central Christian College of Kansas. Our goal today is to take you on a tour of campus. I know that many of you cannot be here and things have changed. We've got people that have seen campus way back when, people that just saw campus last year. So I wanna just take you around, uh, tell you some stories, let you see some sights and uh, be able to benefit from this. So right behind me, you have Science Hall. So this is, uh, this is the building, this is what we all remember. This is the central part of campus. Uh, built in 1904 actually there's a cornerstone in the building uh, off the right which is 1904 we didn't get in the building until 1914 actually prior to it being science hall for central christian college it was science hall for walden college and the, believe it or not this building housed everything at one point people lived here they went to classes here the library was in here everything happened inside this building it's still the place that people come to when we say come to campus look at the big building in the center of campus interestingly enough this is one of those sites that not many people know about behind the sign right here there's a little bench and some rocks and a lot of people don't realize what they're for most people don't even notice them as they walk across campus but uh, back in um, somewhere, I think it was the 90s somewhere, there was a gal named Michelle Schreffler, and she used to use this area to come pray, and during her prayer time, she would actually take rocks as symbols of some of the things that she was praying about. Unfortunately, she passed while a student here, and so in honor of her, they have set up this area here, which is kind of like a little prayer area. Now, we're not gonna be able to go over there, but if you ever come to campus, you need to be sure to stop at Heartbeat Coffee. You'll see just across the road, this is right across the road from Gillespie, is Heartbeat Coffee. Heartbeat Coffee is one of the auxiliary businesses that are sponsored through the foundation. Maybe we'll talk a little bit more about the foundation later. It's pretty awesome though, because it's like the campus coffee place. Further down, uh, if where the old industrial arts building is, those of you who remember probably in the 80s and so on, that now is where we have a daycare center. So it's interesting, we used to fix cars there, now we're fixing children. A new feature that we have, actually there's two places over Main Street. Those of you who are here and ever had to cross Main Street, you know that can be a little bit of a dangerous endeavor. So in association with the refinery just down the road, they help sponsor and build for us two crosswalks. Now the one by the dorms, actually has a flashing light so students can now press that light and they're free to walk across and the town's great people stop not a problem and then there's this other crosswalk it's not a lit one but again it allows people to easily cross campus now you may wonder why am i crossing the street campus is on this side well that's because the expansion of the last number of years we've been able to add some new buildings to campus which house the christian contemporary music program or the contemporary music program as well as our art building and so here we're actually going to go into the music building and show you a little bit about what's going on here back behind us is actually an old garage that they've retrofitted into a small concert hall it's called the warehouse and so whenever we have little concerts or juries, we can actually, it's a smaller venue than Greer Auditorium, which is pretty large. Uh, it's pretty cool to look at. So come on inside. Uh, see here, this is the main room. This serves kind of as a classroom, planning, uh, conference area, and so on. The real heart of this building this is actually the studios, which I'll take you in here. And what you'll see as you come into the studio is we have our state-of-the-art recording materials over here. We have a working studio behind us for instruments and recording purposes. We also have an individual solo area for soloists to do their recording as well. Uh, senior students are actually putting together their, their CD, probably something new uh, called today than a CD, but that's, this is where they work. This was developed largely by the work of Jake Kaufman, who is now our chief academic officer, but he was uh, instrumental, <laughs> instrumental, instrumental in getting all this done. So. Come on in, let me introduce you to someone. This is Amy. Amy is our art instructor here, and we're actually gonna go look on the outside of the art building because we can't go in, because my understanding is, is that Amy is preparing for some other things that will be happening this weekend. So you need to check back in on the schedule and see where Amy's sponsoring some of the artwork tour, and then she's gonna actually be doing some of her own artwork. All right, thank you so much. All right, we're gonna continue through. Take a look at some of the 
uh, guitars and so on. This is pretty cool. Create some environment, uh, some inspiration. It's pretty cool stuff. All right, we'll continue on through. Going into the dark. We'll merge on the other side. So you'll see behind me, this is actually the warehouse. We won't go in there, but this is where that small concert venue is. So one of the newest facilities to campus is the art building. Actually, technically it's not a new facility. The building has been here for years, but it largely served as a storage shed. So a few years ago under the Hoxie administration, we're able to actually retrofit this building and now it serves as the art center. Amy, who is our instructor for art, utilizes this building and in it includes things like pottery, a kiln, uh, watercolors, oils, acrylics, as well as stained glass. Al and Rillian has come up on multiple years to help establish a stained glass program. So this is the art building. Like I said, you have to check out this weekend. There's other times that you can actually check in with Amy and you'll be able to see inside the art building. I would like to notice the, the landscaping that was done out here. Hal and Kathy Hoxie and Gary and Millie Anderson came up, I think it was just last year, in the middle of 100 degree heat and they came out there and did that, that work. So uh, we really are appreciative uh, of them. Th this is one of those areas where we have some ideas of future projects. If you look, this is not a paved area. It serves as overflow parking. So the CCM building and the art building, one of our goals is eventually to pave out this parking area so it's accessible to student, handicap accessible, as well as it'll serve as a better overflow parking for Greer Auditorium. Because when we have music programs and drama programs, you know, people want to come, they need to park, they get across, and this would be the perfect area. So we're looking to that. Greer Auditorium, Wesley Black Fine Arts Center. Mostly people know it as Greer because they think of the auditorium, but it actually is the Wesley Black Fine Arts Center, as well as Greer Auditorium. Inside is where our choir, uh, piano, music, theater departments all house. And in non-COVID years, it is where chapel is and convocation. So we're gonna take a look inside and just do a quick walkthrough. So come on in. This was built, I believe, back in the 80s. I think as a freshman, actually as a freshman, my first job, and it was 87, yeah, my first job was actually here in this building. So this is the front entry here. Oh, I gotta show you something. Come here. Come here. So as we go down here, one of the things that many people don't know unless you come to McPherson is that the former art teacher, Naomi Ullum, was a fantastic muralist. And she helped establish a number of murals all throughout the, the Kansas area, but a number also hang downtown. And so I believe there's one on the McPherson Auto Restoration. There's one celebrating All Schools Day. There's one celebrating the, the college itself. One about the refiners, which was the first basketball team to win the Olympics, which is actually from McPherson. But these are just pictures of some of the work that she has done, much of which was with students. So it was pretty cool. So. I guess this is okay. See these stairs? Say look at these stairs. See these stairs. Actually, I'll come. See these stairs? This is where the first lady and I first met. It's a very special place. These stairs on campus is the most like special place in the world for us. She was an upperclassman. I was a freshman, and it was choir. We had to try out for choir. We talked here for the first time. Oh, what's going on in here? We're getting ready for oral skills. Oral skills, okay, all right. This is uh, uh, Brett Jansen. He's a professor of music here, oversees the humanities. Again, too, one of the other murals you see in the background there. Uh, that was done by Bryce Bishop, that's right, who lives uh, not too far down the street, down in the Wichita area. So this is the choir room, music theory room. All things music, this is the room, so. So, Brett, you're going to be putting on uh, a concert. So, so, yeah, you check that out. It's a two piano recital. And with what's his, you, you yeah, and? Yeah, Dr. Bradley Baker. Okay, Dr. Bradley Baker. So, again, that's on the schedule this weekend. So, be sure to check that out. The other thing on the schedule is you can actually sit into a choir rehearsal. So, all you choir people out there that want to just come in and sing along, uh, be a part of that. Be sure to check that check that out. Thank you, Dr. Gansley. The dark part of the stage. All right, 
So this is Greer Auditorium. Back in 1987, first opened, uh, this replaced an auditorium, which I think replaced an auditorium. Uh, we seem to be replacing auditoriums. This one stuck for a while. This is mainly used uh, to service uh, chapels and convocations. It can be used as a classroom as well. Chris uh, Gates is our drama instructor here and does a great job of uh, allowing students, I mean, I think that was one of the special things that for all of us we remember that Central Christian College gives you the chance to do things that you could normally not do perhaps on in any other campus. This in here is the drama lab, uh, set up for a classroom space right now. It was used at one time for band rehearsals and so on, but now it mainly houses some of the digital type uh, uh, recording that we do, uh, part of the communications program. Minjin Beck uh, is our science area. It takes care of uh, classes related to physics, engineering, mathematics, biology, chemistry, and so on. So many of you re may remember, at least I do, for most of us, we probably would think of this as the realm of Betty Ivers and Grace Rhodes. Actually, I remember taking my marriage and family class from a single lady named Grace Rhodes. If you remember, uh, those of you who were here before, on the one side of Minjin Back was the home economics, really, classrooms. Uh, actually, I think in my time, I was the only male member of Oakia at the time. I remember baking cakes for people. Well, now that's been all retrofitted to house our physics program, as well as some classroom space, mathematic classes, and so on, teach at that area. By the way, if you look at the floor here, I think this is a project that alumni can really get behind. This lobby needs some help. This sun bleach in, you look at the carpet uh, area, you can see the old color of the carpet and the new color of the carpet. And so one of the projects we have on the list this year is to do some changes in here, some modifications to help it look nicer uh, as we move forward. Speaking of Grace Rhodes, here she is, Grace Rhodes, in memory of Grace Rhodes. So this is the biology lab. This is one of the things, uh, a number of years ago, we had a problem with the roof. There was ice on the roof, broke through the ceiling, and because of that, we were able to do some modifications on the building itself. And one of those modifications was being able to put in a physics lab as well as doing the biology lab. Oh, I should show you something real quick. This is an example of what we're doing with COVID. So nearly every classroom on campus has a camera. Some of them are mounted this way, some are mounted on the ceilings. Part of our COVID strategy has been to make sure that students can interact with any classroom on campus if they have to be remote because they're in quarantine or isolation. So every class right now, at least in this uh, semester, is able to be watched live. So well, that's one of our strategies to make sure that students are being able to maintain their academics. Oh. No, it's, it's my, we're just waving. Okay, that's Mike Craig. Mike Craig is the uh, biology teacher here overseas right now. Most of what happens in this building. There's a greenhouse over here. Every year, the biology department raises funds by doing seedlings and so to great tomatoes, all kinds of things. So if you're ever interested and want to help, uh, come on down in the spring. We'll get you all ready for your garden. Back behind me, as you see me approaching, this is the prayer garden. It was a gift by one of the outgoing classes. It's kind of a nice quiet area here. A tradition here is the ivy cutting ceremony at the end of the year. And so what they, and, and there's always the class has to go find the ivy. So the idea was they would plant ivy here so that ultimately there would be always a source of ivy as part of the tradition of the college. And if you look down in here, this is the senior park dedicated as a sanctuary. It was given by the class of 2004 and so that cross remains here in the of this middle part of campus always as a reminder that we are christ-centered it's kind of a nice quiet area to relax now behind me you'll see uh, the project last year one of the aspects of the alumni project was the hammock farm if you look there you see people actually enjoying the hammock farm let's go over and say hello for you. Now, um, actually, let's turn this way real quick before we go to the hammock farm. So you, just to understand where we are on campus, right here used to be Lewis Hall. For those of you who remember Lewis Hall, breaks my heart. I loved Lewis Hall, 
but I can't tell you how many times I got wet going to chapel because people were dropping water balloons out of Lewis Hall as I was going to chapel. Well now, besides this, the prayer area, we now have the hammock farm. Hi guys, how's it going? Hey. Are you guys hammocking out here? Oh, no. yeah, yeah. <laughs> enjoying that. So it's a great area if people just need to relax or just get away they could come out here have a great time this was built to buy the funds of the alumni association oh sorry this is another special place so one day early on as i was courting the first lady i was carrying her and dropped her on this sidewalk because of those cracks she got a big goose egg on her head and she was on a share team and she had a black eye when she was on the share team this is another one of those memorable spots. So we're gonna go to the Reimer Business Center. Reimer Business Center was also built, I believe in the 80s, early 80s perhaps. The library, for those of you who remember, the library used to be under the dining hall. Before that, it was in my office. Gotta, gotta check this out. This statue was made, uh, I forget what year, but there used to be a tree that was out in front of Stoll Hall by the parking lot. It needed to be taken down, and so this was commissioned, and it's in honor of the fact, and it's way it's back here somewhere on the back, is uh, Snuffy, and I think it was Galen Myers etched their initials of him and his uh, lady friend uh, on the back, and so this is in memory, it was done to commission that memory, uh, and it sits here to keep it safe from the elements. We'll go to the library. No, I don't, no one's in here. Behind us is a great children's uh, reference section. This is part of the education department as well as we have the free Methodist section. On this side is lounge areas, uh, reading areas, computers, and then uh, our general circulation. You'll notice the mural that is done. This is by Mayoko Shono who and, and Naomi Olam. And I'm gonna highlight this because if you go to the website, there's actually a video uh, on uh, Mayoko and the work that she's doing in Japan as a missionary artist. She graduated in 2017. Bev Kelly is our library director. How long have you been here? Almost 30 years. 30 years. I remember I, as a student, when I was a student, she was working in the academic office and helped out there, but now she oversees the library. And the library is a lot more than books nowadays, it has a lot to do with resourcing students and helping students. It's kind of an extension of the academic success overall plan that we have. This is Linda Linder. She helps with the library as well as oversees our archives. Uh, and so this is the team that works in here. So this is the archives named in honor of John Farrell, Dr. Farrell, who runs the foundation, that's his dad. Uh, many of you know John Farrell, Mr. Central, as he was known, an amazing man. And inside are the archives. You probably look at this, it's just a bunch of boxes, but there's so much in here. Actually, I spent some time in here recently because... Um, yeah, COVID happened and I was hoping there were some notes from the guy who went through like the Spanish flu or something about what to do. I didn't find anything, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to leave good notes. We have a number of volunteers who come in and try to digitize some of the records, our yearbooks, the history, letters, notes, uh, and pictures and so on. Uh, for COVID purposes, you know, you'll notice that we're, we're maintaining one student at a desk. Uh, every other computer is in operation right now. Again, part of the mitigation strategy that we're dealing with for COVID purposes right now. By the way, for anyone interested, if you see this garage, I don't know if you can see out this window, this garage that's out there, that's Merrill McHenry's house. Those of you who are familiar with Greenville and Merrill McHenry, as well as being here at Central, and that garage is actually like his studio and his art. So if you ever come to campus, he'd love to be able to show you some of what he's been working on. So this used to just be a storage room. And here's our eSports program area. And this is actually, I guess you'd call it an eSports arena. I know, I know, people ask me all the time, eSports, what's eSports? Mm -hmm. It's it's a tremendous, you know, if you think yes, about it, is. sports, besides the physical aspect, is really focusing on strategy, strategy development, and so on. So eSports is a way to expand our ability to really interface with the idea of strategic and critical thinking, as well as collaboration, because it's all based on team. So as you see, there's actually a couple students here, and they're actually right now 
just practicing. And it's based on this idea of strategic. There's, there's an outcome that they're trying to reach and they need to work together as a team, communicating. And many times in competition, there's another team fighting against yeah. the, the, their uh, that uh, outcome as well. And so they have to work together. So this ability to communicate, to collaborate, and to strategically think and critically deal with issues is part of what eSports is all about. This is the business wing. A number of offices are here. Actually, our IT center is right here. Oh, look, look. There's Doug. Hi, Doug. Hi. Doug's the newest member of our executive team. He's the chief strategic operations officer. So he oversees our cybersecurity, our internet, uh, IT, as well as overseeing maintenance and strategic initiatives. So this is the PBL wall. Dan, you got to be amazed at the incredible work that our students and our faculty do. Here we are, a small little college in the middle of Kansas, and people are like, oh, you're a small little college. No, it's, it's the mouth that roared. PBL is one of the ways that we prove and demonstrate that. These students have competed against nationally renowned universities and been able to work, if you look, if you see on the wall, they've been able to walk away with first place, second place, third place, to an extent that not many other universities have ever been able to do. So it's an incredible, incredible amount of work and we commemorate that by putting that up here. Hey guys, how's it going? Good, 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 good. Come on in here, so this is the White Houses, newly White House. So he uh, is the director of the business department here at the college, and Jamie oversees our psychology program here. Actually, both were students of mine at one time, and now they have full control. Behind me is the computer lab, it houses most of the computer equipment. I want to introduce you to one other person here. Here's Dr. Farrell. Dr. Farrell, as you know, uh, for those of you who've been here over, well, how many years now? 39. 39 years. Dr. Farrell has been an important part of the campus right now. He's serving in a dual role. Part of his days are here and he continues to teach business. He's given up the reins of the business department to Heath Whitehouse, who I introduced you a moment ago. His primary work is as the executive director of the foundation, helping us raise uh, funds and invest wisely so that we can continue to advance the mission of the college. So. Say hi. Nice to see you. We were just down in the John Farrell oh, archives. archives. So, oh, yeah, very yeah. good. Yeah, awesome. Well, All right, we'll continue on here. If you can see behind me is this flag display. Just kind of an important point to let you know about. This is the, one of the first times in the history of the college that we actually have more students of ethnicity and international uh, association than we do white students. So this is a representation of the countries or provinces where students have come from. So any international student that comes, if they're from a new country, we hang their flag in appreciation for them being here. So that's the international flag display. I'll just walk in here real quick. This is fairly new, not everyone has seen this. This is the education suite. This also used to just be a closet storage area. Hey, come on. This is Kathy Brown. Uh, this is not her office, no. but uh, Kathy Brown is the director of our education department and an essential <laughs> member of our faculty. She's actually the faculty of distinction this yeah, year. So woo. pretty awesome. One of the things that I probably should highlight about our education program, which is pretty extraordinary, unlike a lot of programs, where it's about you coming in as a freshman and then getting all your work done and then maybe, uh, well, you have to because your clinical's at the end of your career. The education program here is built on the idea that as a freshman year, you learn the basics and your sophomore year, they help to find you a placement in one of the local schools so that you can begin gaining experience as early as that first year. We're also requiring that every student does a cross-cultural mission experience in education. So by the time they're seniors and ready to be placed, they have much more experience than the other people that they're competing against for job placement. Kathy Brown developed that idea and that's pretty awesome. I'm just going to pop in real quick into the Tiger store that's right behind me. So the mail room used to be in the bottom of Science Hall. It's actually now housed out of the Tiger store. So this is an apparel shop and the mail room in here. Most of this apparel is all available online. So if you'd like to order something because you can't come out for homecoming, it's stay at homecoming. Order your materials and then you can put it on, sit by the fireplace, have a nice sweatshirt or something like that. There's a couple places on campus where we highlight Westington Springs College and Academy. Those of you who are from Central may not understand the why, but 
when Washington Springs College and Academy closed, we took on their alumni and now we're part of all one big family. And so part of my administration has been making sure that we appreciate the heritage, not only of Central, but also of Washington Springs. All right, going back outside and we're going to the plaza. The plaza was built under the Hoxie administration. Those of you who remember historically, there used to be a road that ran in the middle of this section of campus. So Hoxie came up with the idea of building a plaza. Uh, the road was shut down for a number of years, but it was just a dead road. So the idea of putting the plaza into the place helped to really create a community center for students to be able to enjoy just a place to relax. It's great for outdoor concerts and classes. It's named for M.B. Miller. It's the M.B. Miller Heritage Plaza. He was the fourth president of the college. Behind me, you see the clock tower, which is the central feature of the plaza. It displays the a clock as well as the stained glass tiger head, I think by Al and Rillian, who had done that. The clock tower is featured primarily during graduation where the students, when they graduate, as they march through the plaza, well, actually, it's called the touching of the tower. They actually reach out their hands, touch the tower in commemoration that God is our strong tower, the four sides representing the four gospels. And then the bell, the victory bell, which used to be in front of Lewis Hall, between Lewis Hall and Science, that uh, now hangs inside and that is from Orleans Seminary, I believe. So it's one of the only objects, the oldest objects that we have to commemorate that time. I don't know if you've noticed that around campus, as we walk, there's all these banners that are hanging up on light poles all throughout campus. Part of that is the core four. The mission of the college is a Christ-centered education for character. That character component is highlighted on these banners. So we believe that we're developing students with heart, soul, mind, and strength. Each of those have two distinct character qualities. So like this one here talks about the mind and rationality, that we wanna help people be rational, critical thinkers. You'll see others as you go out through campus which highlight different character qualities. We're about ready to enter into the Broadhurst Student Center. It primarily housed the dining services. At one time, the Tiger Den used to be in here, as well as the library. We're gonna head downstairs first. So, uh, in uh, cooperation with the Butterfield Foundation, which is actually where former President Hoxie serves as the director, we were able to get funding to build uh, a new wellness center. We had a, a weight room on campus, which is over in uh, the gym area, but we were finding with the, the expansion of athletics, there were some students that just needed, you know, get, imagine you're in there you're trying to run on the treadmill and like 20 wrestlers come in you know we needed to keep the weight room but we needed another area uh, a little bit more low-key and so people could go and not feel so uh, weird sometimes so come on in let's just look around so this is the new addition to the campus it was just built this summer Professor Sodengard, she's way over there, she's way. I was all under her leadership that this happened, funded by the Butterfield Foundation. And so what is featured here is largely cardiovascular and exercise science, because this is not just a wellness center. It's really been developed as a working laboratory for our exercise science major. So you see some of the students who are actually using, uh, here's a kind of an interesting thing. What's going on here? Um, this, he's using a TRX. So right now he's just working his shoulders, but we can do a full body workout just doing this suspension training. And here's some other functional models as well. All uh, okay. Here. Good form. Look at that form. That's, that's what I like to see. These guys are from our baseball program, correct? Right? Yeah, sweet. No way to represent. This is actually two-sided. So the, we have the one side here, which is really built for exercise. We can also do a large classroom, but on this side is largely focused on just the cardiovascular. So you see we have some Cybex trainers as well as uh, treadmills. There's some lab equipment that's over here. So students can actually come in and get some training. They can get some insights into physical fitness. And this is open uh, for students and faculty staff to use. So this is where the student mailboxes are. For those of you who remember, those mailboxes are the original mailboxes from Lewis Hall. I think they've been moved around two or three times, but they're still in use here on campus. So I'm gonna take you up to dining services. 
Right now, Dining Services is actually being sponsored through a partnership with Creative Dining Services. So in here is the, the main dining center. It really hasn't changed in some ways. It's exactly as it always was, but then there are other things. So come on in through. Hi, guys. Hi. So I'll take you on a quick tour of what's happening here. For those of you who remember, you remember this door, right? Well, this door used to be the way that you used to get your food up until about five, six years ago. So you would walk through here, get your food, and pop out on the other side. Well, this now has expanded. And so let me take you a quick tour of what they're doing. This is the grab and go. So students can come up here, choose what they want. That gentleman behind there will bag it all up for you and uh, pick up your bag on the other side. And that allows you just, if you have to run to class or you want to go out in the plaza, uh, do that. And then we have hotline menu. Hello. How's it going? Good. Uh, hotline choices. So again, this is all right now with COVID, it's all built to either you can dine in or you can take out if you want to. We have developed, it's not open right now, but then for food allergies, we have a third line over here. So uh, really working on full service for our student between the ath athletes and their many needs and dietary restrictions and so on, creating a, a dining service that meets all those needs. And as you see, social distancing happening. There's only four people allowed at each table to allow for social distancing and only so many people allowed in the dining hall at any one time to make sure that that's happening. So one of the projects that was worked on this summer besides the hammock farm was the Frisbee golf course. And so this is an example of a Frisbee disc. They're different. It's not like a Frisbee Frisbee. So these are available here at the college and there's a course set up all across campus. You can kind of see behind me is one of the targets. I'm going to really embarrass myself here, but no. right? Oh, oh, bad. Oh, bad. One of the baskets that are set up in the golf course. I believe there's nine holes all across campus, and that expands all the way from Greer all the way over by what used to be called the Industrial Arts Building, which is now where the daycare center is, back behind some of the dorms, and even as far as the backside of the Oh, guys, go. oh, wait, let's see how they do. Because I embarrassed myself. So they're actually playing. Oh! Nice work. So there's nine holes across campus. This is a great way. <laughs> this is a great way for students to get out and do something. It's low key. Uh, so anyone can participate. You can do it by yourself, do it with other students. My understanding is that every Thursday there's an open competition. Is this John Walker? He's the director of student life here on campus, part of the executive cabinet, oversees all things student uh, life related, residence halls, financial aid, all that kind of stuff. Anything that engages students, that's where he's part. And Elijah Marsness, who serves both as an RD over in Klein Hall, but is really the mastermind of student activities. A very creative individual, does great work keeping our students engaged in what's going on on campus. They were instrumental in helping getting all these on campus. All right, so behind me, as we're getting ready to go into the gym here, you can see this white house here. That houses the coaches right now. People used to live in it. Actually, my good friends used to live in there, but uh, now it's actually an office space for coaches. And right next to it then is uh, the tennis courts, which was an anonymous donation that was given to the college a number of years ago. You see students out there using it, part of our recreational and athletic offerings here at the college. So we're gonna actually go in. Uh, this is the north side of the gym what is uh, now the weight room and changing rooms and so on, used to be the auditorium. So this used to be a chapel area on this side. And I have it on very good word that former president Hal Hoxie and Kathy Hoxie spent many hours in here. Hal's job was actually cleaning all the uniforms. And Kathy's job was actually cleaning the pianos which were in the practice rooms on this side of the gym. So uh, the arts and athletics coming together. The, the gym that many of you know still, I'm just gonna look in here real quick, is pretty much the gym. The only difference is probably we took stands out on the one side, but it's still the gym. It's used all the time. A volleyball set up in there right now for practice. The, the old locker rooms are still here, training rooms. I should take note here real quick. We are in a campaign 
to help do some funding to name a number of the uh, rooms on campus. So in honor of the piano and the uniform cleaning arrangement that happened, this training room is named in honor of Kathy Hoxie. So if you go to the foundation website, you actually can go and see what rooms are available. So if you would like to make a donation, you can actually name a room in honor of an individual or a memory of an individual. Uh, and that's a great way to, to honor them. All right, so we're walking through, this is the old building. And as I walk through this door, for those of you with a longer history, I'd actually kind of be walking out into the old tennis courts. Now, with the expansion of this south side, this is the south gym area, part of the Ed Pyle Sports Complex, with uh, a new area for concessions, lobby area, new restrooms. And the most exciting thing that's probably happened, on the, one of the newest updates, is the refurbishing of the south gym. We did have some water damage in there over the years and because of a generous donation by a donor able to redo the floors. So this has all been redone this summer. The old floor was actually torn up. We reworked some of the concrete. A new floor was laid down. This is, I believe, a maple floor. Recently got painted. So this is all brand new, ready to go for the season. The arena itself is named for Dr. Jerry Alexander, who was the academic dean here for a number of years, as well as the court is named in honor of Ellis Oderman. Way up where that flag sits right now, probably in the next few months, will be a new banner hung in honor of Barry McEwen, who was the lead gift that helped make this floor and the refurbishing of this part of the, the gym uh, possible. This is Kyle Moody. Kyle Moody serves as the athletic director here and as well as the golf coach. For how many years have you been here now? My eight years. This is the eighth year, so he was uh, instrumental in overseeing this project as well as Tony Romero, who's our basketball coach. So this is, um, so you see, this is, uh, so it shows the kind of the history of athletics. I don't know if you can see in here. For men's athletics, you see we start with Westington Springs, their history and how that led into Central College, some of the original teams that are being honored here, and that kind of comes to the middle. And then women's is on this side. And so you'll see some of the history of women's athletics starts way over here with the 1943 here they are you can see them right up here the 1943-44 first cheerleading squad uh, here on campus and then the basketball uh, teams and volleyball teams uh, and so on so this is a great another place where that that connection between Westington Springs and Central Christian College really goes into effect we'll walk back from the gym and I tell you this gym project was just a just an incredible blessing and I can't tell you enough how important it is for our donors always to keep us in mind whether it's little things that can be fixed you know like we need a new ice cream machine that's a little thing that could be done or refurbishing buildings because it's very very important that we are a part of what's going on so if you look behind me you'll see this sign that says the ambush a lot of people ask me what's the ambush well it's just a student life initiative about uh, central spirit we are the tigers so many people don't realize that when tigers hunt together, they're called the ambush. And so when the students gather together to cheer on their athletic teams, uh, they gather together as the ambush. So if you ever want to get an ambush t-shirt or something like that, you know what that's about. It's the idea of us hunting together. So we're going to head outside. This is on the south side of the gym. It's really just to highlight uh, for you some expansion that has happened and is going to happen. So we'll take you out here. By the way, we've done some refurbishing with the Industrial Arts Building in honor of Merlin Fields. It's a project done by Galen Shields. Really has fixed that area up to honor him for the work that he's done in industrial arts. Largely, it serves as a maintenance building to which we're able, because of all the industrial art equipment is there, take care of many of the needs that we have. So imagine if you would, that there's a road coming from Main Street through this area into a circle drive that connects to Maple Street. That is the project that we'll be working on groundbreaking this month and hopefully will be done in December. It's the largest expansion project here in a number of years 
here on the campus, and that is to put a road, a drive, that will be named in honor of Elmer Dahlke, who is a member of the board, probably has given uh, in the years that he's been associated with college over a million dollars, and so it'll be named in uh, his honor, so it'll be called Dahlke Drive, and it'll connect Main Street with, with Maple Street. Then if you kind of look behind me, just some of the expansion. For those of you who played soccer, I didn't get to play while I was in college, but I did coach for a couple of years, assistant coach. And I remember that all we really had was the soccer field, and that was pretty much it. If there was grass on it, we were happy if there was a couple of patches here and there. Right now, that has expanded, so you'll see the Ivers family press box. That now oversees the main soccer field. Behind the trees, behind that is a, an auxiliary soccer field for practice purposes. That's probably new to many people. As well, as you continue in this direction, there's another soccer field. And then the softball field, which currently is just uh, here next to the soccer field and thankfully again through donations of individuals we're able to put the lights up on that softball field so let me take take you down here real quick so the expansion of these fields has been very very important to the campus with so many athletes looking to do practices and dealing with their academics we're constantly having to process people through. And so having multiple fields allows us to actually keep, keep the students active and practicing without them having to practice late into the evening. It's an issue that we have actually with the gyms. We need more space to be able to house everything that needs to happen. So you can see the, the soccer fields here and behind me, the softball fields. And as I said, we have these new lights that are up. So now the softball ladies can practice and as well as play games later into the evening, which is something that they didn't have that option to do before. Oh, and actually, come on, come on. If you look behind me, it looks like they're actually doing some pitching practice and so on, or batting practice. Look at that, and that's our softball ladies doing a, tre a tremendous job, coached by Coach Annis. Hey, ladies! Hey! hey. Uh, besides the softball field, what many people don't realize is we purchased the, the ca light capital baseball diamond area. So that's actually now owned by the, co the college that's out on Avenue A. So our baseball team actually has a place to practice. So anyway, I hear the bells in the background. You know what the bells mean. That means a train is coming. You will not be able to hear me anymore. So I just want to thank you for taking this tour with me today, just seeing what's going on on campus. If you have any questions, reach out to our team. We'll let you know. If you know about bits of history that we should know, you should tell me so that we can celebrate that. So God bless you. Thank you. Enjoy your weekend.